Good evening and welcome to Lord of the Hills Lutheran Church. We're so glad you're here to worship with us. Um, we hope that in this time you find um, power and connection. And for those of you who are local, just a reminder that our semi-annual meeting is Sunday, June 6th at 1130. We invite you to be fully present here, to join with us in communion, and to now prepare your hearts and minds as we begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider. Help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your way when we differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Please join in singing with us our opening hymn.
us now and we shall awaken, we shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery, we are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light for the Please join me as we pray together the prayer of the day. All powerful God, in Jesus Christ, you turned death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Listen for the word of the Lord. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with the scripture, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus, and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for the eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we do not, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For you know that if the earthly tent we live is in destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So you know that for this um, summertime, we're going to be looking at all the different pieces of the puzzle. You can see now for this time with children how um, on top of those pieces of puzzle, you can see all sorts of little figures of people. See how they're each both in a circle together, they're in their own circles, and then there's dotted lines that connect them. We're going to hear Jesus's explanation of how we're connected to one another by doing God's will. That's a big concept. But that part about being connected, several weeks ago, we talked about, remember this one? Here's the church, here's the steeple, open the doors, and here's all the people. We often gather together in a circle to pray, like after confirmation when we pass our candle. Or maybe we circle up so that we can see one another. We are connected. So throughout our worship service, I invite you to look for connections. And also, we listen together to how God's giving us directions. We do not always want to follow those directions. And sometimes maybe they don't seem clear. But we're going to listen for God's will for us, the directions God has for us. 
And we're also going to see, and this is a word that maybe you're not familiar with, how we're kin. We, we are connected one to another. And that's a general term for being kindred spirits, being of the same family, to be kin. So there's, you see a picture of people who are connected, and that's what Jesus wants with us. So I invite you to now take your hands, let them be connected, and please repeat after me as we pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. We thank you for giving us. We thank you for giving us. Each other. Each other. Help us lean on each other. Help us lean on each other. Rely on one another. Rely on one another. And listen together. And listen together. For how you want us to live. For how you want us to live. And where you're pointing us to go. And where you're pointing us to go. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again so that Jesus and the disciples could not even eat. When Jesus' family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed, the house can be plundered. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins, and whatever blasphemies they utter by whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin, for they had said he has an unclean spirit. Then Jesus' mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And Jesus replied, Who are my brother, my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, Jesus said, Here are my brother, my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. We trust that you have a word for us that will help us hear your call to each one of us, where each of us fits in this puzzle that you're putting together of your will and your work to be done in this world. Grant to us kind and compassionate and open hearts to receive your word and your will and to see how we're connected to one another and then give us the courage and the willingness to go and live in that way. We ask and pray for this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I was only 27 years old. I thought I seemed kind of old, but in the scope of things now at 59, 27 really isn't that old. And there I was in my first call in rural Montana. A terrible accident had taken place. Some of you who've lived in rural areas know that that is part and parcel of rural life, farm accidents, road accidents, equipment accidents. And as a result of this accident, there was a young man who was in a coma. He wasn't much older, uh, much younger than I. He was 19 years old. But as one of the two pastors in that community who weren't Catholic or um, some of the others who were really small churches, people came and they said, Pastor, here's how you should pray. Pray that he, and then fill in the blank. People had different ideas. Pray that he goes quickly. 
pray that he fully recovers. Pray that, and on and on and on. It was heartbreaking. It was heart-wrenching. It was overwhelming. There we were struggling to understand how could this be connected in this small town as some of you who've lived in small towns know they're deep and abiding connections. And then it became so clear that the most important prayer we could pray was the one that Jesus had taught us in which we prayed, thy will be done. In our gospel reading from the third chapter of Mark, in those last few verses, Jesus identifies his mother, his brothers, his sisters, his community are those who do his and God's will. So what does that mean for us? What does it really mean when we pray together the Lord's Prayer and pray that God's will would be done? Some of you, I know, have heard my really kind of one primary sermon, that this is a wee journey of following Jesus. We are in this together. This past week, preparing and studying this text, I came across a great commentary where the writer used the term kin, that we have a kinship, that we are kin one to another, not by blood, like someone might think of as a family and the language of family could be challenging for lots of different reasons. But there's a kinship that happens in faith, that we're connected one to another. This, I think, is a great message for us as we start in this summer, finding new ways to be together both in person and, of course, electronically as well. How do we listen to God's will for us and listen to one another? How do we use and utilize the gifts and the resources and the skills God's given to us and respect that others have different skills, different insights? So this summer, as we move forward, asking for God to reveal to us what part each of us plays, what part of the puzzle we are, I invite you to consider when you pray that Lord's Prayer, that thy will would be done, would be a big, wide open prayer. And that you would start considering how in all of humanity, we are connected one to another. It's different when we look into one another's eyes, even if maybe there seems to be some ways that we identify them as being separate or different. And go back to that visual from our children's message. See all those dotted lines? I want you to consider how God's connected and created us in love. And those are lines of love. I hope you'll keep joining me this summer in being connected by those lines of love. And love can take place in so many ways. That young man, he recovered. He had some limps. He wasn't quite the same physically. He did have a full mental recovery, which was a great relief. The prayers that people said, they didn't just affect him. They affected me. And now, years and years later, maybe it affects you to know that there are those times when we do not know what to put into our prayers. God's absolutely willing to hear all of them. Just like that loving, kind, compassionate parent who patiently listens again and again and again, so is God. And Jesus has given us these instructions. Pray in this way. Thy will be done. As kin, let us keep praying for one another, find kindred hearts and kindred spirits, and understand the great kinship we are invited to, as together we do God's will. So often, it's someone else who hears and sees and understands and has that insight into how God has given us gifts to use. May we be willing to be kin and go where God's will leads us. Amen.
at this time in our worship, we pause and invite you to consider how there might be uh, opportunity um, to share with others how you've seen God alive and at work in the world. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for believers all over the globe. We remember the mission and ministry of Wanji and the Gatumbo school children. Unify us in service of the gospel that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation, the gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us and diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, seeking restoration when human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or in any need. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart. Strengthen and renew us with your spirit. You are with us in every breath, and now we lift up the prayer concerns of our community. Grace Cook and the Cook family, James Austin, Chloe, Dale Vanderford, Nancy Saunders, Carol, Mike and Cheryl Shellhouse, Greg Nelson, Tony Hayes Jr., Michael Patterson, Chuck Grote, Andrew Ike, Jan Nupp, Linda Krabenhoff, Judy Dionese, Carol Groves, Mindy Brune, Les and Carrie, Schritter, Barry Amon, Mary Stagmuller, Jamie and Brian Fluger, Heather Harrington, Karen, Gary, Sarah McCombs, McCombs, Michael Bax and Teresa Quick and their families, Connie, Lisa, Ashley, Cameron, Asher, Seth Rossman, the Fetchmeister family, Beth Engelking, the Lyons family, the Hunter Brown family, Andy Martinez, Alyssa Stoltz, Hayden and Luke, Eli and the Mankin family, Pat's family, Michelle and Ryan and family, Jenny Janicki and the care of her mother, Kim and Isabella. For these and those we now name are hold in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of the ages, in your goodness, you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy, especially remembering those we have recently lost and we now name in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. It's your generosity that makes ministry possible here. So thank you so much. Um, find ways to connect with us and thanks for all your financial gifts.
Please pray with me. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. We join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to join in singing along our closing hymn. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. A few announcements. Tomorrow is our semi-annual meeting at 1130. It's going to be both in person in the sanctuary and here on Zoom. If you can RSVP in Realm, so we know we have a quorum, that'll be great. And then in the afternoon, um, from 12 till two, we invite you if you wanna bring a picnic lunch, we know the weather's gonna be hot, but come, we've got lots of games and outdoor activities and fun ways to just meet your neighbors, be connected, be that piece of the puzzle God's created you to be, find some kinship. And if you're interested in what um, worship and music look like moving forward as things have changed with um, regulations about in-person activities, join us um, for um, an in-person meeting in the sanctuary at 11 o'clock a week from today. Jesus wanted his followers to be united and to remember that his love would be with them always. And so it was that on the very night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven given for you. Take and eat. And again, after supper, our Lord Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and he blessed it. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation shed for you. Take and drink. Whenever we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim a great mystery of faith. The Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you 
and keep you in his grace. Amen. You are the body of Christ. Go in peace to love, serve, and grow. Thanks be to God, and we will.